welcome to service 73 and this is for the 14th of August 2022 and today we're continuing to look at uh, Hebrews and we're at the tail end of chapter 11 and the first couple of verses of chapter 12. The crowd of witnesses and what might stop us running the race. First we're going to have a song and as usual the lyrics and the chords can be found in the video description. We are witnesses, witnesses for Christ as we live out our daily lives. He is judged by our words and ways. My speech be gracious to all, my heart be true, not twisted or small, my life be pure as I can achieve, so Christ be seen and be. by our words and ways. We are witnesses day by day. So must my hands build, never destroy, never bring tears, instead only joy. Honest by day and honest by night. So by my poor light. We are witnesses, witnesses for Christ, as we live out our daily lives. He is judged by our words and ways. We are witnesses day by day. Must my eyes turn ever from sin, seeking out good and big Christ to win, fearlessly say that Jesus is Lord, so Christ be seen in deed and It was faith that made the Israelites able to cross the Red Sea as if on dry land. When the Egyptians tried to do it, the water swallowed them up. What a record all of these have won by their faith! Yet they did not receive what God had promised. Because God had decided on an even better plan for us, his purpose was that only in company with us would they be made perfect. As for us, we have this large crowd of witnesses round us. So then, let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way and of the sin which holds on to us so tightly and let us run with determination the race that lies before us. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from the beginning to the end. He did not give up because of the cross. On the contrary, because of the joy that was waiting for him, he thought nothing of the disgrace of dying on the cross. And he is now seated at the right hand side of God's throne. We're given all these examples of faith, men of faith and women of faith, uh, and how through their lives they played their part in God's plan and that plan was to bring us to where we are today which is on the road to salvation we're following the Lord 
Jesus Christ. Now, there are many things that will try and distract us from our mission. Uh, Satan is, is very good at the distracting game. So what actually can get in the way? I'm speaking obviously in general terms, but yeah, we all have the same buttons that can be pressed. So this should apply to most folk. What might stop us running the race that Paul speaks of in his letters? Well, one of the things that he says that, that, that can be a stumbling block is the, what we call the mixed marriage. Now, this has nothing to do with race. It's nothing to do with the colour of someone's skin. It's all about where they are in relationship to God. It's the believer versus the unbeliever. Now, you might think that... Um, uh, a Christian man marrying a, uh, an atheist girl, well, it might do her some good. And it might. It might indeed. But if the non-believing part of a relationship continues, there's no real problem while they're childless. But when the children come along, suddenly things get serious because... One parent will be saying, God matters, and the other parent will be saying, oh no, he doesn't. And for the sake of the children's upbringing, for their sake of their souls, that's why we have this uh, advice in the Bible that you should only marry another believer. There's a couple slightly older than myself, uh, just round the corner, and they found themselves in the, in, in the situation of the, the, the girl believed, the boy didn't. And what she did was she prayed to God and kind of set a deadline. If he hasn't believed by, whatever it was, Christmas, let's say, I will dump him. And what do you think? Yes, by Christmas, he had become a believer. So they got married and, uh, well, lived Happily? Well, yeah. well, they lived ever after, let's put it that way. <clears throat> now, what else? Your job. Are you working just so hard, so many hours of the day, that there's no time for God? Now, if you're thinking, oh, but I have to, to pay the bills, I just have to work all these days. I've got no time to go to church. I'm, I'm, I'm due down the, the factory or whatever. Well, remember that in God's economy, if you're giving a tithe to the Lord, he will honour that. In the very last book of the Old Testament, he says, put me to the test and see what I come up with. And I can assure you in my life where uh, a, lot of it were, a lot of it was spent uh, well below the poverty line. In fact, I don't think I've, I, I've ever actually been officially above the poverty line. I don't feel poor, but you know, eh, nice guitar sitting there. But, <clears throat> no, you honour God and he honours you. It really works. It's not the prosperity gospel. It's just the basics of Christianity. Now, are you tainted by the world? The way you do things, the way you run your business, is it run on godly Christian lines or the way the world does it? How does the world do it? Oh, well, you know, well, quite often they have two sets of accounts. The one the gift of the tax man and the real one. Well, as a Christian, of course, you can't have that. It's all got to be above board. You can't ask for God's blessing and do the tax man at the same time. That just isn't going to work. How about temptation? 
Uh, we can all be tempted to something. With some folks it's, it's, it's money, others it's sex, uh, some it's fame. The list goes on and on. In picking your, your career and how you're going to earn your living and what sort of friends you pick, try and keep away from those areas of temptation. Now, you know what they are. I don't have to tell you what they are. You, you know yourself in what areas you're tempted. Where are your weak spots? Well, you know, if you're tempted by sweeties, do not work in a sweetie shop, for example. If you're tempted by Nobel young girls, don't become a school teacher. Become a fishmonger. There's not a lot of temptation involved in being a fishmonger, is there? Not a lot. Not a lot. Now, in whatever line you're in, and whatever company you keep, there's always the pressure to just keep quiet. Just, just fit in. Don't mention that Jesus thing, you know. It's just somebody doing a Sunday. Nobody needs to know about it. Is that what God wants? No. How did the Great Commission go into all the world and make disciples of all nations? Right. Well, we don't all have to up stakes and uh, travel off to Africa. There's a mission field right round the corner. Your neighbours, the folks you work with, the people that stand at the bus stop with you every day. These are the folk that you can witness to, but you have to do it in a, a gentle way. The good witness would strike a balance between being forthright and preaching the gospel, the full gospel, nothing but the gospel, and being tactful. A little bit of common sense. You don't want, when you approach the bus stop, everyone to suddenly turn their back on you or, or run away and decide, oh, I've forgotten something. I've left it at home. You, know, you don't want that sort of reaction. You have to start talking to them. You can't just stand there in silence conversation has to take place. Well, the weather's a good place to start. There's traffic passing you. Talk about the traffic. Oh, that was that. Do you like vans? I like vans, you know. I'm not really into sports cars. I quite like, you know. Whatever. Get going. If you want to speak to people in your local area, I may have mentioned this before, but actually getting a dog is a great way of doing it. Because people... Out walking their dogs at the same time every morning, you get to know the faces, you get to chat, and eventually you get past talking about dogs, and you can get into other stuff. The good witness. Are you a good witness? Could you be a good witness? I'll leave that question with you. Now let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one, for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and evermore. Amen. Be strong, my child, you have believed. The Lord is glad, the devil grieved. Be not dismayed, I'll give you strength, you'll see the breadth, the height, the length, of all the love I have for you. Be strong, my child, the word is true. Be holy, child, be set apart. 
leave worldliness and seek my heart. Do not dispute like man of earth, but preach the word to seek new birth and know the love I have for you. Be holy child, the word is true. Be faithful child, for now you're called To serve the Lord for good of all You're not your own, now you are mine And through your deeds my light will shine So know the love I have for you be faithful child, this word is true. Be strong, my child, you have believed. The Lord is glad, the devil grieved. Be not dismayed, I'll give you strength. You'll see the breadth, the height, the length of all the love I have for you. Be strong, my child, this word.